I feel all of these emotions. Anger, frustration, sadness, hopefulness. Now is the time to fight. Now is the time to double down. We will come together and send a clear signal to this country that we are all here to stay. I think it was just a matter of time. And this goes to show that DACA was just a temporary solution that was kind of destined to end up like this. And um, I think it's great that we're all coming to action to protect DACA. But I'm, as a DACA recipient, I'm, I'm afraid that there, this is going to happen and our, the rest of our community is going to get ignored. Like people who don't qualify for DACA, the parents of all these dreamers, and uh, just other members of our community um, that don't fit this label of a dreamer. That last interview you just heard was with Jose Manuel Carrillo, one of the DACA recipients in the audience today, who said he and other advocates will remain loud and visible to send a message to Congress to work on what they're hoping is comprehensive immigration reform. They want a more permanent fix and acknowledge that DACA was a band-aid. They want long-term certainty for themselves and their families, since DACA itself did not provide a pathway to legal citizenship. The Trump administration has given Congress about six months before the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program officially phases out. So there are still a lot of questions about what will happen between now and then. I spoke to Jorge Barron of the Northwest Immigration Rights Project about some of the conversations he's having today. I think the bigger question is sort of looking down the road is, you know, what is going to happen when my work permit expires and I can't renew it? I'm, I'm working right now. Does that mean I'm going to lose my job? Uh, does that mean that I'm going to be subject to deportation? Um, so that's those are some of the questions that people are asking us today. And a lot of state and local Seattle leaders are promising to do what they can to help. Included on today's stage was state AG Bob Ferguson, who is in fact threatening legal action against the administration in light of today's decision. He's staying quiet on what exactly his legal argument is at this point or the timing, but we will stay tuned on that aspect. I've also been compiling a lot of reaction from lawmakers across both sides of the aisle, and you can find their full statements at our website, king5.com.